by call to order. I would uh, like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Bongo, uh, who is virtually present, and uh, other members of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs. Uh, thank you for attending to this hearing. For this hearing's agenda, we shall take into consideration the following bills. Senate Bill Number 725, or the National Police Clearance Systems Act, System Act. Number two, Senate Bill number, Numbers 222 and 726, or the Forensic DNA Database Act. And number three, Senate Bill Numbers 431 and 668, both amending RA number 9263, or the BFP and BGMP Professionalization Act of 2004, as amended. Now, uh, may I please request the committee secretary to recognize the guests and the resource persons present today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may we acknowledge the presence of Attorney Gino Labarias from the, the Department of Interior and Local Government. Ms. Jeannie S. Ginto, Division Head from the Department of Finance. Policy Research and Liaison Office. Good morning. Attorney Carlos Borja Jr., Virtual Chief Budget Management Specialist from the Department of Budget and Management. Ms. Maria Amor Atutubo, Virtual Supervising Budget and Management Specialist, Acting Capacity. Assistant Commissioner Ariel G. Ronquillo from the Civil Service Commission. Good morning. Sir. Good morning. Uh, Police Colonel Reynaldo Ticalua, Chief DNA Division Forensic Group. Police Major General Eliseo D.C. Cruz, Director, Directorate for Investiga Investigation and Detective Management. Good morning, sir. Police Brigadier General Constantino T. Chinayo, Jr., Director Forensic Group. Attorney Timothy Michael Schulberg, founder Six Consulting Company. Good morning. Jail Director Alan S. Iral, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, Chief. Good morning. Director Lowy S. Purahan, CEO Six, Virtual. Mr. Victor V. Lorenzo, OIC, Office of Assistant Director for Information and Communications, Technology Service. Good morning, sir. We have ASEC Gregorio Catapang, Jr., OIC Director General, Bureau of Corrections. We have CG Admiral Artem UM, uh, representing CG Admiral Abu. is G. Como Glenda T. Pereira, Deputy Commander, Marcelek. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, suspend the seglet. Okay. Uh, there is a ongoing technical problem with our uh, uh, coverage. Uh, one minute uh, suspension.
Again, uh, good morning once again to all of us here. Our agenda for today may be captured by two simple words. The first word is upgrading, and the second is professionalization. Taken together, they signify two things that are badly needed by our law enforcement in the performance of their duties. Back when I was the chief of the Philippine National Police, I was always the first to advocate for upgrading and professionalization. I, for one, know for a fact that poor equipment and misly resources will likely lead to underperformance. Siyempre, alam natin na ang pagiging moderno ay hindi ang nag-iisang sukatan ng galing ng ating PNP, BFP, at BGMP. And yet, at the same time, we also know the importance of high morale in relation to performance. <clears throat> Investing in much-needed equipment and resources as well as opening up opportunities for rank upgrading may be surefire ways for us to boost the morale of our law enforcement agencies. Today, then, we shall look into the matter of how we can best respond to the need of for upgrading and professionalization. First, let us see how institutionalizing the national police clearance system may benefit not just our PNP, but also the Filipinos who will up, apply for this clearance. Second, we'll also see if the establishment of the forensic DNA database shall result to a more efficient and effective criminal justice system comparing it to the status quo. And lastly, we will consider the need of our BFP and BGMP for an upgrading in the rank classification and see how much legislation shall bring about a stronger BFP and BGMP respectively. As always, being your chair of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, I look forward to listening to everyone's positions comments and suggestions on the bills for consideration. Let us be guided by the two words I gave in the beginning of my statement. First, upgrading, and second, professionalization, geared towards the maintenance of public order and safety. Dagang salamat. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. For an orderly consideration of the bills, the bills will be as follows. Number one, National Police Clearance System Act, then followed by Forensic DNA Database. And number three, amending RA 9263 or the BFP and BGMP Professionalization Act of 2004 as amended. So, uh, Nina, the Democrat? Sure. Hola, 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 uh, to the uh, <clears throat> Honorable Members of the Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, especially to its Honorable Chairperson, our former GPNP, Senator Ronald Bato M. De La Rosa, sir, and fellow public servants and attendees in this public hearing, good morning. I'm Police Major General Eliseo D.C. Cruz, the Director for Investigation and Detective Management of the Philippine National Police. Please be informed that uh, the PNP fully support Senate Bill Number no. 725 or the National Police Clearance System Act because it complements the PNP's current trust and focus to continuously enhance its investigative capability and competence by utilizing information technology to solve crimes and to ensure public safety and security. As is stated in the ex explanatory note of Senate Bill Number no. 725, 
the PNP has already taken the initiative to implement the National Police Clearance System, or NPCS, to provide the Filipino people and the general public a quality frontline service which offers a streamlined and efficient way of securing police clearance. The NPCS has the following objectives. First, to provide expeditious, equitable, comprehensive, accessible, and reliable system of checking of existence of criminal records of an individual. Since the record checking is centralized, the national police clearance that will be issued to the applicant will reflect his her record, for example, in Batanes, even if he she applied in Tawi-Tawi. Second, to serve as a tool in the arrest of wanted persons. As of November 7, 2022, a total of 286 individuals were already arrested upon discovery through NPCS that they have outstanding warrants of arrest. Number three, to support all regulatory agencies' offices in the processing of licenses and permits. Since the implementation of NPCS is national in scope, individuals applying for licenses and permits can be efficiently and adequately catered by the NPCS enabled police station nationwide. As of November 7, 2022, a total of 593 NPCS enabled police stations were already operating all over the Philippines. Fourth, to serve as reference for employers in the selection of their prospective employees. Through the NPCS, public safety and security can be facilitated since the employers will have a reliable and robust preference with respect to the background of their prospective employees. And number five, to provide necessary documents for migration, travel purposes, and financial transaction. Currently, the legal basis of the PNP in the implementation of NPCS are the following. Number one, DILG Administrative Order Number 2016-01, dated June 17, 2016, authorizing the Philippine National Police to design and implement the National Police Clearance System as amended. Number two, the Napolcom Resolution Number 2016-393, dated June 17, 2016, authorizing the Philippine National Police to adopt and implement a PNP clearance system as a tool for the maintenance of peace and order and to ensure public safety. And number three, the PNP Memorandum Circular Number 2018-20, dated May 8, 2018, with subject guidelines and procedures in the implementation of the National Police Clearance System. While the PNP has the foregoing legal basis in the implementation of NPCS, a national law will definitely further cement the position of the PNP with respect to the implementation and sustainability of the NPCS or the issuance of the National Police Clearance. And lastly, the enactment of uh, Senate Bill Number 725 will also facilitate and further advance the plan of the PNP to activate the soonest the remaining police station which are not yet NPCS enabled. And with the help and noble endeavor of this honorable committee, the PNP prays for the enactment of the Senate Bill Number 725. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Ilan na lang yung station yun na hindi konektado? Uh, 1,128 pa, sir. Ilan ang konektado? Uh, 569, sir. 569. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that uh, presentation. Um, well, I will go back to you later. Next is uh, DILG. DILG. 
Good morning, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Attorney Gina Lovarias from the DILG. Uh, the DILG fully supports the legislative measure because this will bring efficient, effective, and modernized police force using communication technology. And it will also ensure uh, every human right privacy, and it will also reduce bureaucratic red tape and prevent corruption. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney Labarrias. Uh, DOJ. Well, DOJ? But uh, anyway, I have already read their uh, position paper. Uh, the OJ uh, supports to, uh, supports this uh, measure. So after the OJ, may we hear from uh, NBI? NBI, you have the floor. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we already uh, submitted our position paper on this matter, Mr. Chair. And uh, although we uh, appreciate the uh, noble intention of Senate Bill uh, 725, we have cited in our position paper uh, the legal mandate of uh, the Bureau to uh, maintain the, uh, to be the central repository of all criminal and non-criminal records and adjunct to that function, Mr. Chair, is uh, being the national uh, clearing house for uh, criminal records uh, of the uh, country. Uh, we also cited in our position paper, uh, Mr. Chair, the disadvantages uh, in having two uh, national uh, clearance systems uh, with PNP and NBI uh, because of the possibility of confusion later on that it, that it could bring to the public. For example, Mr. Chair, what will happen if the records of the other system will indicate uh, no criminal records, while in our database it will indicate uh, with criminal, which will prevail? That's one of the issues that we have raised. We have also uh, mentioned uh, that under the Modernization Act, under Republic Act 10867, the NBI is mandated to uh, create a modernized NBI clear clearance and identification center. So we have in our pipeline, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, so many initiatives to modernize, to digitize, to make our clearance system uh, more convenient to the public, more credible, and more secured. Uh, what we are actually uh, entertaining to propose uh, with, in coordination with the Philippine National Police is for just uh, for them to join the uh, initiative of the Department of Justice, which is the National Justice Information Service, wherein they could access the database of different uh, agencies under the umbrella of the Department of Justice. Uh, they participated actually, the uh, P, uh, PNP actually participated in the TWG for that uh, National Justice Information Service, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, anyway, I have uh, read uh, your position, paper, and uh, uh, rest assured that this committee uh, is taking note and considering all the points that you have raised, and uh, we will include that in the, we will give due consideration to all those points and we will include that in our uh, uh, committee amendments on the floor kung ito, ito, itutuloy natin after uh, uh, makapag uh, submit tayo ng uh, ng uh, committee report then uh, we will do that ang alam ko ang contention lang naman ninyo is uh, you don't want to be uh, divested of your power as a national clearing house di ba napag usapan na natin yan last uh, last congress so kayo rin naman PNP sana kung mag uh, propose kayo ng measure tingnan rin niyo na wala rin kayong masagasaan eh nilagay niyo kagad doon sa measure ninyo na kayo na magiging sole uh, uh, parang inagaw niyo yung role ng 
ng NBI. So, gagawin natin dyan is hindi natin uh, i-retain natin yung National Clearinghouse sa uh, identity ng NBI sila pa rin. Pero sa inyo naman, in just to upgrade your uh, clearance system, gawin natin national in scope. I-nationalize natin. So, is it okay with you, NBI, pag uh, ganun gagawin natin? Na hindi natin, uh, kayo pa rin ang final national clearinghouse, pero sila, hindi natin sila pwedeng pigilan na mag-upgrade sa kanilang system, i-nationalize nila dahil nga, kayo ang basis ninyo, yung RA, ano yan? RA... Uh, Republic Act. Republic uh, 10867. Act. Yes, oh, 10867. Yes, Mr. Okay, uh, we respect that law. We, hindi natin pwedeng i-repel. Ang takot kayo, baka uh, pa, mayroong magkakaroong uh, implied repeal or re implied amendment of that act na ma-divest kayo of your power as the National Clearing House. No, hindi natin gagawin yan. Ang gagawin natin is i-upgrade natin ito sa kanil dahil you cannot, we cannot stop because of just plain turf war, turf, uh, you know, issues. Hindi natin pwedeng i-stop yung PNP rin na mag-modernize, na mag-upgrade. Dahil nga, ang basis niya, is the Philippine Constitution, there shall only be one national police force, this, there shall only be one police force, national in scope, civilian in character. Eh, anong klaseng national police force ito? Local, kuwan lang, local clearance lang nagagawa. Hindi lang kayang i-nationalize yung kalang scope ng clearance. But then again, mag-upgrade sila, i-nationalize natin sila. Pero kayo pa rin ang national ang parallel clearing house pagdating sa clearances. Okay sa inyo yan? Ha? Ang, ang, ang kanila lang naman kasi, sana naman masaya kayo pag uh, ang NBI, masaya kayo kapag uh, nag-upgrade ang PNP. You, you must be happy with your brothers uh, in the PNP na nag-upgrade na sila. Huwag niyo pigilan yung kanilang growth. Huwag niyo pigilan kasi uh, payag kayo na yung kaibigan yung PNP eh, parang kingkoy-kingkoy lang pagdating sa mga kriminal. Dahil nga, cleared siya dito sa Kalukan City. Eh, hindi, kriminal siya as far as Quezon City is concerned. Dahil nandoon sa police blatter, nandoon sa mga records ng kuha na may kaso siya doon. Ayaw niya magkuha ng police clearance dito sa Quezon City. Doon siya sa Kalookan. Eh wala siyang record sa Kalookan. Cleared siya. So, parang kingkoy ang police nito. Parang kingkoy. Kiniklear niya ang police, ang isang tao na mayroon parang warrant of arrest doon sa Kalookan o sa, sa ibang, uh, ibang bayan. So, gawin natin para maging credible yung PNP. Inationalize natin yung uh, clearance system nila. But then again, we respect your uh, mandate na kayo yung National Clearing House. Hindi, na, hindi agawin ng polis yan. Yung mga sinait ninyo ng mga provisions, we will uh, amend that. Hindi natin na uh, pwedeng uh, sagasaan kayo. Kayo polis, huwag kayo managasa rin sa NBI. Ha? E, trabaho nila yan. Nasa kanila yan. Matagal na nilang ginagawa yan. Tapos ngayon, agawin ninyo. Huwag nyo agawin. Mag-nationalize lang kayo sa inyong clearance. Then, in the end, NBI and PNP, we are working under one government. We are catering the same clientele, Filipino people. Kapag ang mga Pilipino ay masaya sa ginagawa natin, na yung services ng clearance ay available sa kanila, then masaya tayo. Dahil uh, napaligayan natin ang taong bayan. Di ba? Basta, hindi na hindi kayo sagasaan ng polis. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Ha? I will be here. Andito ako. Uh, sisguruhin natin yan na i-amid natin yung mga provisions na yun. Napag-usapan na namin yan noon ni, ni, ni NBA Chief Distor noon, last time, di ba? Si, sino pa yung nandito nung last time na hearing natin? During the 18th Congress, napag-usapan na natin yan. Napag-usapan na natin yung concerns ninyo. And uh, we'll make sure that everybody satisfied pagdating sa batas na ito. Ayaw mo natin maggawa ng batas na maraming magbagulbul. Di ba? Dapat gagawa tayo ng batas na masaya ang lahat. Hindi yung maraming nagreklamo. Kaya PNP, huwag kayong mga gagawa ng papel. Ha? I limit lang natin doon. Tanggalin natin yung provision doon na kayo ang magiging sole uh, ganun-ganun, clearance. May, may provision doon eh, kaya nag-react ang NBI. I-amend natin yan. So, okay na sa inyo yan. Ha? 
Ang importante, hindi kayo katawa-tawa pagdating sa mga kriminal na cleared siya sa kalookan pero may kaso siya sa, sa Quezon City. Tapos, ang nag-issue, Philippine National Police. Anong klaseng national police ito? With local clearance only. Ha? You are Philippine National Police with local clearance only. Anong national scope ninyo? Ha? You, you better... Uh, You better amend the Constitution. Kung hindi nyo kayang gampanan yung uh, national in scope na trabaho ninyo. Okay? So, NBI, okay na tayo dyan. <clears throat> ha? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Kuha lang. Tingnan nyo yung mga provisions doon na kinu-question ninyo din isubmit sa committee, ha? Para mabantayan natin at hindi kayo masagasaan at hindi kayo maagawan ng trabaho. Pero huwag rin yung pigilan ng PNP na mag-grow, na mag- uh, Gaganda yung kanilang systems. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ayos. So, I would like to hear from uh, Mr. Uh, Tim Shelberg, uh, the president of GTH. Ah, uh, uh, DNA, DNA. Sorry, sorry. You're not uh, included in this bill. I look forward to talking about the DNA. Sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I am talking Tagalog no because I want them to understand everything that I say. Yes. Because if I will keep on talking on English, my English is just this uh, small. No, so, no. I can, uh, they can there, might, there might be confusion. I think I can tell by your emotion what you're saying. So Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So, yun lang ang pinakamain uh, contention natin doon. So, okay na tayo? Huh? Yes, Mr. Chia. Oh, sige. So, wala natin problema doon. Ayusin lang natin yung kumsek, ayusin lang natin yung kwan. Yung mga committee amendments para doon. Para walang agawan ng trabaho. Sila pa rin pero tulungan rin natin ang PNP na hindi magiging uh, katawa-tawa sa mga kriminal. Tagadabo City na kriminal, kukuha ng uh, ng police clearance doon sa Butuan City, cleared siya. Walang problema. Kasi hindi kayo national. So, ayusin niyo yung records niyo. So, DOJ, uh, wala ka dito kanina pag uh, kuha namin, pero thank you for coming. Uh, State Council Alden uh, Rubin Luna. But then again, uh, we have read your uh, uh, position paper, but uh, for the record, we, we want to hear from you. Uh, so, uh, since andito ka na. Thank good you. morning, Mr. Chair, and uh, apologies for coming in late. Uh, the de department has uh, submitted its position paper on Senate Bill Number no. Seven Two Five. Um, the the comment of the department uh, focuses mainly on the the uh, Senate Bill itself. Uh, at the onset, the department interposes no legal or constitutional objection to the passage of the bill into law, as the same is consistent with the Constitution. Um, but nonetheless, in the position paper we submitted, we have. Uh, some recommendations, uh, one of which is the inclusion of a provision on the rights of the data subject in the uh, uh, Police Clearance Act, uh, similar to that of Section 16 of RA 10173, or the Data Privacy Act. Uh, we have also proposed a, um, a language or a wording that may be included in the bill, uh, such as on the rights of the data subject, Section 16 of RA number 10173 shall apply. Uh, this is because uh, pursuant to Section 4 of RA number 10173, said act shall apply to the processing of all types of personal information and to any natural or juridical person involved in personal and in, uh, information processing. But all in all, Mr. Chair, we do not interpose any objection. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, DOJ. Uh, Siguro, uh, anything, meron gusto magsalita about this bill so that we can proceed to the next uh, bill? Ah, yeah. uh, Civil Service Commission. Yes, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair, uh, magandang umaga po. I'm Assistant Commissioner Ariel Ronquillo from the Civil Service Commission. Uh, good morning rin po sa lahat. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Civil Service Commission supports uh, the bill. However, uh, we have the following recommendations, uh, if Your Honor, please. Uh, first, the proposed bill should identify which office of the Philippine National Police will implement the NPCS. 
the identified office must be manned by qualified and competent personnel to ensure the effective operationalization of the NPCS. Second, uh, with the ongoing efforts of the government to digitalize transactions in the civil service, we suggest that the NPCS be made accessible online, if possible, for ease and convenience to the transacting public. And finally, Mr. Chair, from the point of view of the transacting public, while we understand the sentiments of both the PNP and the NBI, we suggest that instead of NPCS, maybe we can come up with a unified clearance system so that our transacting public will have uh, convenience in getting the clearance for any purpose for which that clearance is being sought. That would be all uh, from the Commission, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Assistant Commissioner Ariel Ronquillo. Uh, anong sagot nyo doon sa first concern ng uh, civil service? Yes, sir. Uh, out of the uh, all the enabled police stations are manned by qualified personnel and they are all trained by the DIDM, sir. They are all properly trained. And now we are continuously training our future personnel to be assigned to, uh, to the issuance of national police clearance. And about the second uh, concern, sir, of the uh, civil service, uh, our system it can be accessed uh, online. Uh, uh, but uh, in getting the actual clearance, uh, they have to appear because we need to get the biometrics and uh, photos of the applicants. But uh, this can be applied through online so that uh, when they reach our police station, uh, in just a few minutes, they can easily uh, get or their uh, clearance will be released immediately. Yes, sir. So, the, the yung concern lang na particular uh, unit na PNP na hahawak dyan is the IDM. The IDM? Sir, uh, the system is being maintained, supervised, and uh, monitored by the DIDM. But the issuance... Uh, of the clearances are being handled by the local police stations sir, nationwide. We have more than 1,700 police stations uh, that we want to enable. But uh, right now, sir, as of uh, today, we have only 593 enabled police stations. So the issuance is uh, being handled by the local police stations okay. with national databases. So Kendra. particularly the IDM and yes. overseer of yes, everything. Sir. We are the ones issuing the the hardwares, the training, and we are the ones maintaining the system, sir. Okay, thank you. And this, sir, uh, additionally, sir, our system is connected with our CIRAS, uh, the Crime Information Reporting Analysis System. They, that is our e blatter. It is also connected with our uh, CIDMS, the crime, the Case Information Data Management System, the EROG, and the e warrant. In okay. these four uh, databases. Taruhin natin ito. NBI, anong, anong, kuha ninyo? Anong basis ninyo sa pag sinasabi ninyo na hindi cleared yung isang applicant for police clearance? Anong basis ninyo? Um, Mr. Chair, ang records po ng NBI will not only entail the records pertaining to the case itself. To the case itself. Y yung entire records po, yun ho ang records namin. Hindi lang ho yung, for example, transmittal to the prosecutor, information from prosecutor to the courts. Hindi lang ho yun. But the entire case folder of the cases being filed with the court. Kaya ho yun ang tinitingnan namin. Whenever you check the name of an individual, we only do not look at the uh, transmittal itself, but the entire records itself. Kung na-dismiss ba yan, what happened, uh, sino ang co-accused, yun ho ang tinitingnan namin before we issue an NBA clearance. Kapag okay, 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 ganito. Kung ako ang criminal, di ba? Pag commit ko ng crime, nireport ako sa police station. Pag report sa police station, police mag-imbestiga. Pagkatapos mag-imbestiga ang police, file sa DOJ ang kaso. DOJ mag-prosecute ng kaso sa korte. Korte mag-convict ng uh, nung suspect. Ngayon, at what particular stage of the criminal justice system sabihin ninyo na cleared yung tao or hindi? 
as far as uh, NBI police uh, NBI clearance is concerned kailangan bang convicted siya bago sabihin na hindi siya cleared alam mo ongoing pa yung kaso niya nasa prosecution pa o kaya ongoing yung kaso niya sa police station pa undergoing investigation uh, at pa what particular stage of the criminal justice proceedings masasabi mo na cleared yung tao may issuehan ninyo ng clearance I, I, Mr. Chair even in the prosecutor's level uh, may record na po kami even in kung may mga ano uh, your honor if there are news reports pertaining to a particular subject ini-encode ho namin yun. And when you applied for an NBI clearance, kapag ho may hit kayo pertaining to that information, you are required to be interviewed on what happened or are you the same person as mentioned dun sa mga reports na yun. Kung cleared ka naman, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, or na-dismiss yung kaso mo, you will be issued an NBI clearance. Pero for as long as it is pending with the courts, hindi ho namin in ng NBI clearance. So, court, hanggang court lang. Pag nakapile sa court, no way na may ka ng police clearance. Pag pending sa court yung kaso mo. Kasi cleared, cleared, that cleared lang naman yan, di ba? Ang issue ninyo, cleared or not cleared, go or no go. Ganon? Uh, may mga interpretation, um, Mr. Chair, pag no criminal record, no derogatory record, no record on file. For example, no criminal record, baka may mga civil cases ka or may mga pending uh, for collection cases ka. So, no criminal record. So, Pero may case. lalabas yan sa NBA clearance mo. Lal na doon yun, you were, uh, kinumplain ka sa ganitong kaso, ganyan, ganyan, nakalagay yan doon. Mr. Chair, hindi po. Hindi. hindi. Paano? Lalabas lang doon, no criminal record ka. Kapag ka civil cases lang. Pero pag may criminal record ka, uh, no criminal record. No pag criminal ka record. Pagka cleared ka na. Tapag okay. Ka, pagka talagang walang any atta derogatory attachment to your name, no record on file. Okay, thank you, thank you. How about PNP? Gano'n rin ba ginagawa ninyo? Uh, sir, uh, we, if there is a uh, record on our database about a person who applied for clearance, uh, which is, uh, as I mentioned, sir, uh, a while ago, that it is uh, connected with our CIRAS, the eBlatter, uh, connected with our CIDMS, connected with our e-ROGS, e and connected with our enhanced e-warrant. Uh, mag issue pa rin kami ng clearance, sir, but indicated lahat, sir, yung kanyang involvement doon. So, it's not actually cleared or uh, cleared or not. Uh, ilalagay namin lahat, sir, yung kanyang involvement about that person. Uh, especially if he is there in the e-warrant. Kasi sir, yung ating e enhanced e-warrant ngayon, uh, the court concerned from from the lowest court to the highest court, uh, from the uh, MTCC, MTC, RTC, sila sir ang nag upload ng mga warrant so pares doon sa ating system. Hindi na sir kami. So there there is a uh, existing memorandum of uh, agreement between the Supreme Court and the PNP that uh, both parties will recognize the contents of this system as valid, authentic, and legal. Kaya, sir, ang ating mga warrant so pares ngayon, hindi na, sir, i-mail. Hindi na, sir, through mail. We are just uh, opening it in our system and then have it printed uh, because there is a MOA between the PNP and the Supreme Court that this, the contents of this uh, system, the warrant so pares, are valid, authentic, and legal. Kaya, sir, nag-print na lang kami and then isineserve namin yung warrant so pares. And our NPCS is connected with this uh, enhanced A warrant and our uh, CRAS. Kaya nandun lahat sir ang records ng uh, mga naiblater, mga nakasuhan, and even may warrant so pares. Pero sir... So meaning, meaning, station level pa lang. Yes sir. Pag may hit na siya doon, reflected na doon sa system ninyo. Yes sir. Halimbawa, sa... may hinabol ako ng itak. Nagreklamo yung hinabol ko ng itak doon sa barangay, Alalagay sa stasyon. Nireklamo sa doon, reklamo. Pag-issue nyo ng, ng National Police Clearance, Ando na, sir. Nakalagay. 
Nandun na siya, sir. Okay. At saka, sir, ang, ito, sir, ay nationwide. Sa pinakamalayong police station sa Pilipinas, makakapakuha sila ng uh, clearance. So, ito yung decentralization na tinatawag natin, sir. Yun ang advantage pa nito, sir. Completeness of uh, records of an individual kahit na wala namang purpose yung clearance, just, you just want, you just would like to check the record of that individual, pwede, sir. At decentralized, sir, ang issue once. Kahit sa east lang pinakamaliit, for as long as uh, this is included, is considered as a municipality, definitely there is a police station there. So makukuha, sir, ng sino man. Uh, pwede nga, sir, mag-walk in sa police station. Sir, pwede bang malaman itong bagong dating dito sa kapitbayan namin kung siya may kaso? Pwede, sir, eh. Kaya because of the centralized and uh, national uh, database system, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Salamat. Any more? As far as this bill is concerned, meron gusto magsalita? Yes, uh, Coast Guard, you have the floor. Sir, uh, good morning. Uh, uh, we have, uh, the Coast Guard have already submitted its position paper in this uh, particular uh, a bill and uh, we fully support the um, this legislative measure mr chair and uh may suggestion lang po kami doon uh, sir sa position paper namin is in that is uh, for the pnp to create a coordinated system that will allow access to military and uniform service to check and counter check uh, information, especially of those individuals applying for employment in these agencies, sir. And this will also uh, help in uh, cutting down expenses in background investigation, as well as uh, lessen the requirements that are being submitted by the applicants to uh, presently, because sir, maraming uh, different kinds of uh, requirements or clearances are uh, required to be submitted when applying for unemployment. And uh, Ito, sir, yung uh, the uh, establishment of this uh, national uh, uh, police clearance system will really greatly help uh, our agencies and uh, other agencies in uh, cutting down expenses, sir, also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that. So from here, uh, we proceed to the next ag agenda, which is the... the Senate bills number 222 and 726 or the Forensic DNA Database Act. Uh, you have the floor, uh, PNP. Good morning, sir. I am Police Brigadier General Constancio Chinayog Jr., the director of the uh, PNP Forensic Group. The PNP Forensic Group and the entire Philippine National Police are indeed grateful to your good office and fully supports the introduction of Senate Bill 726 that would surely result to a more efficient and effective law enforcement, improved investigation process through forensic DNA technology, and would greatly contribute to the expeditious resolution of crimes by providing a more reinforced DNA forensic system through legislation. The PNP seeks the assistance of the Philippine legislators to pass a law that would legitimize the mandatory collection of samples from arrestees and persons under custody, as well as provide the necessary budget to fully utilize this available technology. It was mentioned in this bill that submission of DNA sample is made mandatory to those persons enumerated under sections 9A to 9G and voluntary to those citizens under Section 9H and Section 14. Since the entire process involves collection, submission, and storing of personal information, the PNP humbly recommends the inclusion of the representatives from the Data Privacy Commission and the Commission on Human Rights as additional members of the National DNA Database Scientific Advisory Committee, pursuant to Sections 15 and 16 to ensure the protection and observance of the basic constitutional rights to privacy of those who are subjected to DNA testing, and likewise to further strengthen the integrity of the Philippine National Forensic DNA Database. Last week, last week, sir, the PNP Forensic Group, composed of 41 delegates, have attended the 14th 
Asian Forensic Science Network Annual Meeting and Symposium in Jakarta, Indonesia. This conference is a platform for forensic scientists in Asia to come together to discuss, share, and advance forensic science. Among the keynote speakers is Mr. Timothy Michael Shelberg, who shared his insights on how DNA databasing to DNA legislation has, was able to as, assist the government in achieving its mission. Tim Shelberg is the president of GTH Consulting and the general manager of GTH DNA, a global policy research and consulting firm in the field of DNA forensics and human identification technologies. For the last 22 years, Mr. Shelberg and his team have become the world's foremost experts on forensic DNA database legislation, public policy, and law. He has advised over 50 foreign and state governments on DNA database legislation, laws, and policies. He received his undergraduate degree from the Washington State University in 1988 and his law degree from Seattle University in 1991. Before joining his firm, he served as a lawyer and governmental affairs advisor to the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police. He actively collaborates with multiple stakeholders across country around the globe on policies and resources to establish and expand the use of DNA forensics against crime and for humanitarian purposes over the past years. He has led initiatives to raise awareness for the value of DNA database through legislation on, in countries like India, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam. This is through communication campaigns, educational and training initiatives, and institutional partnerships to enable criminal justice systems better detect, prosecute, and prevent crimes. Offend, offender DNA database programs are the most effective crime-fighting technology available to police. Mr. Shelberg will show the rapid expansion of DNA database legislation throughout the world and how countries preparing to implement DNA database programs should consider the experience, extensive experience from the countries that preceded them. With that said, may I respectfully request, sir, that Mr. Tim Sheldberg, whom we invited today, be allowed to be our first person. Yes, go ahead, uh, Mr. Tim Sheldberg. Uh, you have the floor. Great. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, you. members of the committee that are online with you today, uh, it is my great pleasure to be a, a great pleasure to be a guest uh, in your committee and a, and a guest in your country. Um, actually, Mr. Chairman, you're, you're, I followed your career for a number of years as the police chief and now as a senator, and it's, 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 it's an honor to be in front of you today. So um, you, uh, I think also that your, your, you and your staff should be commended because the, the bill that you're reading today is, if I look at global standards, uh, you've, you've, you've nailed it right on the head of how it should be written. It's strong to basically help solve crime exonerate the innocent and protect innocent people, but also strikes a great balance for human rights and privacy. Um, so next slide. Uh, I'm going to give a presentation today, Mr. Chairman, if uh, it should last about 12 minutes, but if you want to speed me up, you let me know. Um, no, but no, we don't need to speed you up. Okay. We can, uh, we may request you to uh, speed down so okay. that uh, we can uh, clearly uh, understand Great. what you're saying okay Great. please uh, Great. Go ahead. you bet so um, as the general explained we have a significant background in advising countries on dna database legislation uh, we have a team across the world that does this and we've been doing this for over 20 years uh, next slide so I, I know, Mr. Chairman, that you know how the databases work because of your background, but for the sake of the audience, just it's, they're just like fingerprints. The idea is that you collect somebody's DNA for identification when they, they're arrested or convicted, um, and then you search crime scenes against that database so you can solve crime. Now, car parliaments, congresses around the world and policymakers pass this legislation for four excuse me, uh, four primary public policy benefits. These databases solve crime, they prevent crime, they exonerate the innocents, and they actually save the government money. Next slide. 
they have significantly solved crime across the world. And if you look at a couple of the older databases in the world, I'll, I'll highlight the United States and the United Kingdom, by getting about 10% of your population in the database, which is generally a country's criminal population, the United States has actually had 580,000 hits to crimes that they never would have solved if it wasn't for the US Congress putting up together the, the DNA database. And the United Kingdom, even more impressive, a country of 70 million people have 6, 000, 6 million criminals in their database, 10% of their population, and they've had 750,000 hits. We'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. Uh, next slide. So let's look at the, the big decision that a a Congress has to make is how many people go in the database. And that decision that you make, sir, will determine how many crimes you solve and how many people you can exonerate. So for example, there's a few countries that have only put sex offenders and violent criminals in the database. But when you do that, your matches are extremely low. You can only get maybe five to 10% matches when you take a crime scene from a rape or a homicide and put it in your database. But the countries that include all crimes, like your bill does, you can actually achieve a hit rate of 60%. Meaning that, for example, if you find over the course of a week, 10 stranger rapes that occur in the city of metro area of Manila, if you simply do one test and put that DNA into the database, you're gonna identify six suspects right away out of the 10 rapes that happened. It's an amazing uh, program. Um, Next, I think we skipped one, Ms. Lorna. The, the, uh, the slide, it deals with the second goal, which is to prevent crime. And let me explain, when you have a big database that hits at that high rate, you're preventing a lot of crime because you find the right criminal quickly, you remove them from the community, and they're not able to go on and commit more crimes. And I'll give you a story out of this country of Brazil. Next slide. And this is the case of Marcos Teguero. And in 2006, he, uh, the Brazilian Congress was presented, next slide, Ms. Lorna. The Brazilian Congress was presented with legislation um, that would require the criminal database to be created, but they actually voted no. They didn't have the information to understand the value of the criminal database, and they voted no. At that next year, this individual was released for prison in 2008, and because his DNA was not convicted, when he went back to his hometown and committed five rapes and murders all one month apart, DNA at every crime scene, when they collected the first crime scene DNA and put it in the database, they didn't get a match because they didn't take his DNA. So basically, if the Brazilian Congress would have passed the legislation in 2006, four out of those five rapes and homicides would never have would have happened. And we actually know who they are. This is the first victim. Unfortunately, she would have died anyway, but all four of these other young women, one more click, Lorna, would have still be alive today if the Brazilian Congress would have passed that law in 2006. Now, when the families of all these people figured out that their daughters and wives and mothers could still be alive if that law passed, they went down to the Capitol in Brasilia, next slide. They worked with the Senate, they worked with the Congress, they worked with the president, and they quickly say, passed that bill so, this, so they could prevent more deaths in the future. So it's a very good story and a very good example. The next example, the reason why we have these databases is to exonerate the innocent. Again, imagine if you have these high hit rates, what happens? You find the criminal quickly with one test, that means that police don't have to investigate 10 or 20 more people. They don't have to question them. They don't have to make them feel uncomfortable. They don't have to arrest them falsely, as we know, even convict them falsely. And that's how these databases exonerate the innocent. And finally, Mr. Chairman, the main reason that we have these databases, they can actually save your government money. There's a number of studies uh, throughout the world, and here's some from the United States that show, well, hold on that one there, Lorna, just up on deterrence. Uh, one more click. Uh, these studies show the savings to government. So this lady took two control groups. She found two control groups that were uh, convicted of a, of a crime. They weren't in prison. They were put out in the community even though they were convicted. One had DNA taken. One group had, did not have DNA taken. The groups with DNA were 42% less likely 
to commit another crime within a year because they were scared. They knew that if they did, they would be discovered because their DNA is in the database. So you can imagine how much savings occurs when you have 42% less crime by those individuals. Next click. The next study she looked at is what's the actual crime reduction every time you increase your database size by 10%. So let's say your law would have only gone to convicted criminals, but then you add arrestees and you add it, to, you increase your database 10%. What's the impact on crime? And she found that when you, every time you increase by 10%, you have 5% less murders, 6% less rapes, 8% less vehicle thefts. So clearly showing the link between database size by legislation and reducing crime. And finally, she looked at what's the social, next click, what's the social cost to crime? And she looked at things like when you're a victim of a crime, uh, hospital bills, time out of work, uh, property crimes, stuff you lose. And they calculated that for every time you add one person to the database, you're actually saving the citizens of the US $20,000, or excuse me, the government of the US, $20,000. And uh, so that she declared that in the United States in 2010, we added uh, six, 761,000 criminals to the database. And by doing that, uh, reducing the cost, we actually saved the government and the people of the United States um, over uh, 15 billion, I think that says $15 billion. So you can, you, you kind of get the point. And the next slide is another study I encourage your staff to research. Um, it just looks at one state, the state of Indiana, which is next to Illinois, the city of Chicago area. And they found that by taking the legislation to all arrestees and by having that high hit rate, they actually saved the taxpayers of Indiana $60 million a year. So again, I encourage you to look at this data. Uh, this bill that you're passing can actually save your country money. Excuse me, uh, how about the Philippines? Do you have an estimate as to how much we are going to save if we are, we're going to legislate? Uh, uh, I have not done that research. DNA law? Yeah, I haven't done that research, sir, but I encourage your, your staff to look at these studies and make okay. comparisons. Okay. Yes. Next Please continue. Slide. Yes. So I, I think the country that has most figured out, though, how much money you can save from setting up these databases, the United Kingdom. And I'm going to go through the numbers. Hold there, Lorna. We'll go one by one, if you don't mind. So they have 63 million people in their database. And next click. They have 6.6 .6 million people. I'm sorry. They have 63 million people in the country. They have 6.6 .6 million people in their database. That's 10% of their population, which they estimate to be their criminal population in the database. They add fifth, next click, they have 50,000 criminals a year to the database. But next click, here's the big one. They actually do 400, or excuse me, next click, Lorna. They do 40,000 crime scenes compared to the database every year. So that means there's not 40,000 homicides and rapes in the United Kingdom every year. That means they're doing homicides, rapes, every property crime, every drug crime, they're testing everything. And the reason they do that, next click, is because they've declared that they have a 66% hit rate, which means that they've had 750,000 hits, which means they have 76 hits a day in the United Kingdom for a population of 70 million people. So imagine if you have 76, 76 hits a day, how much crime you're gonna be able to solve, how much crime you're gonna be able to prevent and save money. And next click, what, and this just shows that 70% um, of all their tests against the database are property crimes. And they wouldn't be doing that if they weren't solving saving money. Next, next slide. So to give you a little more background about the United States, as you may know, the uh, first click, we'll go one by one, Ms. Lerna. Um, it has become an essential part of our, our criminal justice system in the United States. It's run by the FBI, but it appears in every element of our system. Uh, next slide, or, or click. We have 20 million offenders in our database. Next click. It's been operational since late 1990s. Next click. We have many, uh, it's known the FBI has set up many standards and quality assurance standards that are available to the rest of the world to utilize. Our law, we have a state system unlike yours. Every state controls what goes into the database. 
all of our states, like your bill, requires everybody to convicted to go in the database. Next click. But only 33 states require everybody convicted and arrested. Your legislation is everybody convicted and everybody arrested if they're charged, which means that our hit rate's going to be lower than yours when your database matures because your bill goes a little further than the United States. And you'll, you'll be able to achieve these high, high hit rates. Uh, our Congress quite hasn't gone to that level, or our states haven't. Um, next click. So we've been at this 20 years around the world. Um, there were early adopters, like I said, the United Kingdom, United States, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, they basically led the way. There was a lot of data, like I just presented to you. And because of that, we now have 59 countries around the world that have passed this legislation like yours, sir, and have implemented it on someone of a national scale. And here are those 59 countries that have done this. In Asia, you can see, and I actually have Philippines and Thailand mentioned as having databases because you already do. You've had a, a PNP decree that set it up. You just don't have the legislation to legitimize it. Uh, and that's what your legislation will do. Um, and the same goes for Thailand. But uh, you have, uh, and um, the, the one thing you'll notice is that this past year alone, there's been this huge explosion of legislation throughout the world. More than these 59 countries want in on this. And uh, here's the countries on the top line have, are countries that have introduced and passed legislation since COVID creating the legislation or this program. And you notice that even in Ukraine in the middle of the war, they actually passed legislation in their parliament and have begun implementation because they, they've they visualized post-war that they're gonna need a lot of human identification. Um, and you can see I have Thailand and Philippines on here as you're actively looking to formalize your DNA programs today. Next slide. So the big question that, that members of your Senate and Congress have to look at around the world when they introduce this legislation is balancing the benefits to society of these databases and any concerns to privacy. Well, I've explained to you the benefits, solve, prevent, um, exonerate, and, and save. The privacy concerns uh, you have to show are the benefits outweigh. But the big thing to see, if we go back to that click, Lauren, right there, this is the only thing going into the database, these 27 numbers. So what, what people think, next click, Lauren, and hold there, a lot of people think that the whole genome is going into the database, and that's why they get upset. But if you can explain to them that only those numbers are what goes into the database, not your genome, not anything that the government could look at for healthcare or anything like that, they start to see DNA as just like a fingerprint. It doesn't mean anything other than the ability to distinguish me from somebody else. And that's an important factor to, to deal. Some people will say, though, that, well, only the numbers go into the database, but the government still has your biological sample. And maybe the government could do something evil with that, like test you for insurance reasons and things like that. So a way that your bill, and you have this in your bill, to control for this is you destroy the biological sample after the profile is uploaded to the database. That protects privacy, because then there's no threat that you can use that biological sample for something other than identifying people. Next slide. In addition to that, uh, there's all these other things in your bill that allow for public privacy, like penalties upon misuse, giving the public trust they need to know that the police can manage an effective privacy conscious database. So with that, sir, I think I am uh, next click. I am done. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm happy to be a resource to your team. Um, and providing information from around the world to make sure you have the best legislation that can solve crime, prevent crime, and exonerate the innocent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, have you been to the uh, FBI uh, DNA laboratory? I have. In fact, sir, I, I was with your the team you sanctioned five, five six years ago that you sent to the FBI, to, I was with that team, and uh, and took them to the FBI. It's, yes, it's a, it's a huge uh, yes. thing, right? Yes, new building. Yes, but uh, I also went to Philadelphia Police uh, 
DNA uh, laboratory. Yes. And also yeah. went to New York police in yeah. YPD, DNA laboratory. And uh, when I asked them, how's your capability? Philadelphia police, uh, how's your capability? Is it at par with the uh, FBI uh, DNA? <laughs> They, they told me, no, no, we're better than the FBI uh, <laughs> uh, DNA capability. And then when I go to NYPD, and they, they say, say also that uh, we, we are well, better than the FBI uh, DNA uh, center. So, yeah. but anyway, that's that's beyond, uh, that's yeah. uh, beside the point. My point is, uh, how, how do you do that in the United States? We have... Uh, every police department sure. has its own DNA uh, yeah. laboratory. How do you centralize everything? Sure. So we're we're different than your country because we have a, a state system. So what happens is it, it's in three levels. So in our in each state, like California, um, you would have the the local crime lab, maybe at Los Angeles or San Francisco, and they they do DNA, and then they forward it up to the state of California which is the Department of Justice of California. They have the database at the state, and then they forward it up to the FBI in the Washington, D.C. area. And the same happens in Florida and Texas. That way, if you have a, a criminal that went in the database in California, but then he went to Texas and committed a rape, both would forward it to the FBI and they would get a match. And then they, the FBI would inform the states. Because uh, you have a different uh, system of government. Yeah. Yes. You have a federal form of government. Yes. Here in the yeah. Philippines, it's uh, quite different because we have two uh, national uh, uh, investigating agencies. We have the National Bureau of Investigation, and we have the Philippine National Police. They are all they are they are both uh, national uh, agencies. Sure. So the way that. My opinion of how that would work, sir, is you you would have your obviously uh, the entity that's in charge of the database would control the hub, but each law enforcement agency, NBI, PNP would would have its own database and send it to the hub. So, for example, if the NBI is doing casework, you want to be able to share with the PNP's database, so they would have a workstation that they send up to the to the PNP. Yes. Uh... Thank you, thank you for that uh, input. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, uh, the problem is uh, turf between the NBI and the PNP. That 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 that, that is uh, that's given already because uh, the the comments of the NBI from in their uh, uh, position paper, it seems that. Uh, we, we need to harmonize everything. So anyway, that's not your problem. No. <laughs> that's, that's my problem. Yes. Uh, so thank you for that uh, presentation. Absolutely. Uh, Good to be here. How, how I wish uh, we have the same capability. But we are going to that level. We, we are, oh, yeah. No, we are, I, 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 we, I, we present. Uh, yeah. Uh, PNP crime laboratories. How many DNA DNA laboratories do we have? We have three, sir. Uh, we have in the national headquarters, one in Cebu and in in Davao. Yung mega lab natin, sir. So, ako, if somebody somebody complains against me for uh, siring a child. I will have to, I don't need to go to Manila. I just go to Dabo City DNA Laboratory to prove that this uh, child is not my son. So I don't have to support the the, pay, the mother of that uh, child. Yes, sir, as long as uh, the uh, needed samples are submitted to our uh, DNA laboratories in Cebu or in Davao. Don't, sir, may examine na kung uh, yung paternity question, sir. Okay. So thank you, thank you for that. Uh, next, uh, DLG. Can we hear from you, DLG? Sure. Yes. Uh, we recognize. Uh, <clears throat> the DLG supports the mandate of the le legislative measure because it reaffirms the goal of United Nations in the field of crime prevention and law enforcement. However, uh, DLG recommends that 
this bill should be harmonized with the law on data privacy. So, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. DOJ. Good morning, Mr. Chairperson. Um, the department is in the process of drafting its comment right now, sir. So we will be submitting our comment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, civil service. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Civil Service Commission fully supports the bill, subject, however, to the following suggestions. On Section 14 of the bill, uh, there is an encouragement for volunteers from both government and private institutions to donate their DNA samples. Um, we believe there is a need also for a provision that will clarify whether these volunteers can delete their DNA profiles in the data bank anytime. Uh, uh, based on any reasons that they will advance. Second, um, Mr. Chair, in Section 15 of the bill, um, uh, there is a creation of National DNA Database Scientific Advisory Committee composed of uh, different agencies. We propose, Mr. Chair, that the bill should identify which will provide administrative staff to act as secretariat to the proposed committee. Uh, further, there must be delineation of roles between the members of the committee for its smooth operation. And finally, on Section 18, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the bill uh, creates or introduces a crime called uh, tampering, abetting, or attempting to, to tamper DNA samples, which will be punishable by imprisonment for 12 years and one day with the perpetual disqualification for public office. Our concern, Mr. Chair, is, is that if the offender happens to be a government employee, this perpetual disqualification for public office would mean that he will be automatically dismissed from the service without the benefit of an administrative trial. Uh, we propose, Mr. Chair, that instead of uh, uh, adding absolute disqualification as an accessory penalty, the bill should classify that act also as, as a grave administrative offense as, and therefore that will allow the person to defend himself in an administrative proceedings that uh, may be instituted against him. This is also pursuant to numerous jurisprudence which states that the criminal cases are separate and distinct from administrative cases even if they arise from the same acts, uh, Mr. Chair. That would be all uh, from the CSE. Thank you. Thank you, civil service. Uh, in BI. Good morning to the Honorable Chair, Senator De La Rosa. I'm Dr. Rommel Papa. I'm the officer in charge uh, of the Office of the Forensic and Scientific Research Service of the NBI. With me is Attorney Val Derek Ignacio. We were invited regarding two Senate bills. Uh, as I may start with Senate Bill 222. Um, we only have two comments regarding this bill, but we fully support it. Uh, first comment would be Section 3, num letter B. Authorized officer means any police officer not below the rank of police superintendent. We would like to be clarified as to the competence of this police officer in the collection and storage of DNA material. I think uh, we have to be clear because uh, the National Bureau of Investigation only licensed forensic chemists uh, would collect or are biologists from the Forensic and Science Research Service. Can, can we ask PMP? Uh... Can you answer that uh, question? Sir, uh, the, uh, the DNA laboratory is uh, continuously conducting training for the uh, collection. Uh, we are conducting training personnel for the to on the collection of DNA samples, not only for our personnel, but also for those investigators who uh, some understandably are the first persons in the crime scene poser. So na great training naman po tayo, sir. Continuous yung training natin, sir. An ano yung uh, sinabi mo, sir? Doc, um, uh, ano yung require ano yung the competence? Competence, the competence. Competence pag collect and storage. He is he should be a uh, Sa, at the National Bureau of Investigation, we only utilize res registered chemists chemist. from our 
uh, forensic chemistry division or our biologists or anybody who were properly trained as I agree with the uh, with sir but I also agree with our civil service commission as regards professionalization it is very important young level of competence for them to collect and store evidence because this is evidence that, that's true thank you sir uh, we, we can we can agree uh, we can uh, disagree more on that uh, so anong ginagawa nyo yan? Your training? Yes, sir. Nagte training po tayo, sir. Sa mga personnel natin, sir. Yung mga assigned sa DNA. And also, yung mga investigators natin, nagpapaseminar rin tayo. Kasi sila naman, sir, yung nauuna sa sa crime scene. So, itinuturo natin yung paano yung pag-collect para hindi masira at yes, yung preservation. Pero investigators natin, pagdating sa crime scene, tumatawag pa rin yan ng crime lab, di ba? Kasi that's beyond their competence. Investigador ka, ikaw magkukuha ng... DNA samples doon? No, that's beyond your competence. Dapat, ang magkukuha, yung chemist talaga na taga-crime lab ninyo, di ba? Uh, we resort to that, sir, kasi hindi, uh, we admit na may kundi tayong shortage sa mga chemists sa mga stations natin. So, kaya tayo nag-create train, sir. But eventually, when we rec when we uh, recruit yung mga number, yung required number ng chemists, uh, sila, sir, ang mag-co-collect yan. I, I don't see any problem. Pag sinabi mong uh, kulang ka, ay kulang naman talaga. E, NBI nga, hindi, hindi rin na kaya i-cover buong Pilipinas. Di ba? Kayo pa nga, kayo pa na lahat ng munisipyo meron kayong police station, eh, pag meron kayong kailangan kunan ng DNA doon sa crime scene, tatawag talaga kayo ng crime lab sa region. Di ba? Sa province. Sa province or sa region, pag hindi kaya. So, you should address that issue na kailangan ang kukuha doon yung competence na sasabi ng NBI ay talagang competence sila para beyond question yung inyong uh, results ng investigation. Kimis talaga, di ba? Kimis. Sabihin mo, we cannot, we cannot uh, provide chemists chemist or uh, ano yung sasabi nila na competent uh, na tao for every police station but you can provide that in every province, siguro, or every region. Diba? Slowly, slowly, we, we should go there. Yes, yes, sir. In fact, uh, in every recruitment cycle that we have, uh, just like uh, this year, we have 53 KMs na, na recruit. Uh, we may na quota sa amin, so that will be of great help in the uh, strengthening ng ating uh, personnel complements sa forensic group, po, sir. Yeah, okay, okay. Anyway, uh, nandito pa lang. Here is the answer to that question. Uh, yung, you are referring to the 222. Anyway, consolidate man natin ito. Yung bill naman na isa, ito kay uh, Senator uh, Mark Villar, author by Senator Mark Villar, uh, Senate Bill Number 222. While itong uh, Senate Bill Number 726, uh, authored by uh, this representation ay magkaiba. Yung kanya, authorized officer means any police officer not below the rank of police superintendent. But if you consolidate these two bills, pariho lang yan dito, certified DNA collector under my uh, uh, bill, Senate Bill uh, 726. Certified DNA collector refers to a police officer or a person who has successfully completed the training prescribed by the PNP Crime Laboratory in respect of the taking of buccal sample. So, you yung, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, but what, yeah. You, what you mentioned, and also with the other law, it excluded other law enforcement agencies. It only mentioned the Philippine National Police. It excluded the National Bureau of Investigations, UPNSRI, and other agencies collecting DNA. Uh, that's all, sir. Okay. Nakuha mo. We will input that in the... Uh, yeah. Consider natin lahat dito. Ayusin natin yan. Para walang kwan, walang problema. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's good that uh, PNP and the uh, NBI will grow together, not fight each other for a third. Magtutulungan tayo, di ba? Sabay kayong 
uh, gumanda yung trabaho ninyo. As I have said, after, uh, at the end of the day, we are uh, working under the same government and we are uh, uh, serving uh, one, the same clientele, the Filipino people. Diba? Okay. So, any more in BI? Uh, for Senate Bill 222, our only comment aside from that is Section 9. Uh, regarding the Board of Visitors, the NBI would like to be included in the Board of Visitors, and we have already submitted our official position regarding this matter. It was already submitted and signed yeah. by our director. Okay, noted. Okay. Uh, Wala pa kayo opposition, di ba? Wala kayo opposition pag kasama ang NBI doon sa board? Yes, sir. Oh, mas maganda nga, mas marami, mas maganda. In fact, we... Mas patiba yung ating uh, trabaho kapag uh, magsama-sama kayo. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. Sir, um, if I may, regarding Senate Bill 726. 726. Um, I would, we would, the NBI would like to tell the Honorable Senator that we are one with you as regards what you mentioned earlier, that is upgrading and professionalization. That is basically the heart of the NBI Modernization Bill, which is 10867, signed in 2016. Um, however, we are also here to emphasize that the NBI is already performing the functions of the proposed bill, 726. Um, if I may, uh, if I may read, the first issue is several provisions of Republic Act 10867 or the NBI Modernization Law emphasize the role of the NBI with respect to forensic investigation. It is for us to undertake and the investigation and detection of crimes and offenses to establish and maintain a forensic and scientific research center which shall serve as a primary center for forensic and scientific research in furtherance of scientific knowledge in criminal investigation, detection, evidence collection, and preservation. And last, sir, is identification of victims of the dead or victims in cases of mass fatality. Actually, the NBI is the lead agency when it comes to natural disasters, it is us who go to the, to the site to identify victims who are not identified. As these powers were expressly conferred and performed by the Bureau, the act of creating slash establishing the PNP Forensic DNA Database Office could be considered as an implied repeal of the aforementioned provision. Um, second is, the second is, uh, issue focuses on the purported purpose of the Philippine National Police DNA Database Office. The proposed measure is intended to highlight the need to professionalize the collection, storage, and preservation of DNA samples, as well as the delivery of forensic services. However, we, should, we submit that it should not be done at the expense of terminating existing systems. The NBI has, been, has since proven itself in this field through the assistance of not only medical legal examiners, but its reliance to allied forensic science practitioners, including but not limited to odontologists, toxicologists, and geneticists. By the way, we are an active member, sir, of the Asian Forensic Science Network since it was since its inception in late 2000. The complete dismantling of these units to pave the way to the new Philippine National Forensic D DNA Database will not introduce a novel idea. We submit that what the country needs is to strengthen the system of those agencies that already perform such vital functions. There is a, a saying, why fix something that it's not broken? There is an already an existing system. Why don't we help each other uh, upgrade and professionalize. I go with the senator. We can help each other. We will not uh, go against each other with this law. But what we are emphasizing is the NBI has been doing this time immemorial. The Bureau has already proven itself with the numerous cases. It has helped through the zealousness, zealousness of its personnel. Third is the NBI would likewise wish to direct your attention to certain provisions of the bill and our comments. Section seven, access and confidentiality of DNA profiles. At least it was already mentioned yung, um, 
confidentiality. Section 2 is refusal to give sample. The act of refusal to give a non-intimate sample is punishable by an extravagant fine and or imprisonment of after six years. Section 9. Collection of DNA, DNA sample in relation to sec, section 11, storage and, bio of, and disposal of biological samples. DNA samples, especially those obtained from cases hand led, handled by the same, are considered pieces of evidence that pertain to matters under the principal authority of the Bureau by allowing another agency to handle, process, and safe keep these items possess serious concerns, particularly on matters pertaining to chain of custody of evidence and confidentiality. The fourth is, the last issue focuses on the cost of this endeavor. Presidential Decree Number 1445 declares, as a matter, matter of national policy, all resources of the government shall be managed, expended, or utilized in accordance with law and regulations and safeguards against loss or wasted. Going back to what I said earlier, there is already a system in place. It will be more cost efficient if we will focus all our money, all our efforts into one that is already existing rather than create something else. But I still go with what the Senator, the Honorable Senator said that we can work together. We can have several DNA databases, pero what is important is who will collect, who will store, who will process, and we should not break confidentiality and also the chain of custody of evidence. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, anyway, I, I have read all your uh, comments and suggestions, and uh, we will uh, give due consideration sa lahat ng inyong mga sinabit dito. And uh, you want to say something? Ah, yeah, yeah. Sir, uh... Indeed, we have an existing DNA database, so we will not be reinventing any wheel. What we are proposing is that the coverage in the collect, yung dito sa bill nyo po, sir, is yung coverage na mas, lal mas lalaki para mas dadami yung database ay yung DNA samples natin na nandun sa database. So, meron na po tayo, sir, na database existing sa ating PNP, sir. Yeah. So, uh, para lang rin sa sinabi ko kanina, uh, you don't have to mag-aagawa ng TERP. Huwag kayo mag You can coexist uh, peacefully with each other. Meron sila. Meron kayo. What's the quarrel with that? But then again, in BI, we cannot stop PNP from doing their job because as I've said, constitutionally, they are national police, civilian in scope, uh, civilian in character, national in scope, at uh, Talaga gagampanan nila yung kanilang trabaho. Uh, they, they have already their own existing uh, pre and uh, pangit man din kung pigilan natin silang gumawa ng kanilang trabaho, di ba? Uh, they must be happy nga nakita natin na nag improve sila. Uh, nangyari kasi dito sa atin sa iba yung ating system dito, iba yung sa Amerika. Sa Amerika is sa uh, if BI may, they have their own uh, uh, DNA, but they are not preventing Philadelphia Police, New York Police, they are not preventing uh, Boston Police from uh, uh, making their own uh, laboratory and their own, uh, uh, how do you call that, DNA depository uh, database system. So, hindi natin sila pwedeng pigilan. Uh, that's, that's part of their mandate. Ang sa atin lang dito is... Uh, hindi kayo dapat mag, uh, magbabanggaan kung sinong tama, sinong hindi. Uh, ayusin natin yan. Ha? Ayusin natin. Ha? Para, hindi, pangit kasi tingnan, nag-agawan tayo ng papel dito. Uh, ayusin natin. Uh, bottom line there is, uh, huwag natin silang pigilang mag-improve, mag-grow. Kayo naman, you do not step on their toes. Ya, huwag niyo sagasaan yung kanilang. Matagal na nilang trabaho yan. Kanila talagang trabaho yan noon pa. 
Uh, huwag nyo silang sagasaan. Ganun lang. So, mas, mas, mas maganda kung meron silang database, meron kayong database, at the end of the day, i-combine ninyo, mag, mag-share kayo ng data, mas maganda, mas malaking coverage kasi for all we know, ang police naman talaga ang nandun sa ground, di ba? Every crime scene, nandun sila. Lahat ng crime scene, nandun yung police. Ang NBI naman eh, gusto, pipili lang kayo kung anong gusto nyo investigahan eh. Di ba? Hindi kagaya sa police na wala, no choice ang police, kundi investigahan talaga lahat ng krimen nangyari. But NBI, makapili kayo, ito, hawakan natin ito, ito hindi. So, no choice talaga ang police, kundi mag-improve na kailang capability para gaganda yung kailang investigative uh, uh, capabilities. So, ayusin natin ito. Huwag kayo, huwag kayo mag-alala. Okay, maglala. I want this bill to be a happy bill. Na walang uh, walang uh, walang uh, magagalit sa akin after uh, this uh, bill will be passed into law. I will constantly uh, ask your uh, insights, your recommendations in BI at kayo rin. Uusap tayo palagi. Ayusin natin ito. Okay? Ha? Huh? Para sa kabutihan ng uh, bansang Pilipinas, let's unite and bolt in <laughs> for the good of the Filipino people. We have to do this. So, let's pabayaan muna natin yung bill uh, at this uh, status ng bill. Uh, ganito muna. Then, uh, continuously magkukumunikay tayo. Okay? Ha? Sige, pa. Meron pang gusto magsalita about uh, this bill, particular bill? DNA? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Department of Finance. Good Laka. morning, Mr. Chair. Laka reklamo ito. Ayaw <laughs> na naman itong kumastos. <laughs> sige, ma'am. Sige, sige. Wait, Sir, wait. you have, you have invited kasi Department of Finance. <laughs> Binbiro. Lagi tayo. Binbiro. No, sir. Uh, we just like to manifest that in, uh, we will submit our official position paper on this, but we would like to inform the committee that we have uh, submitted our previous position paper on this bill, and we respectfully defer to the appropriate concerned agencies who would have the authority and technical expertise to merit the um, uh, the proposal of the bill. So we post no objection pa, sir. That's all, Mr. Chair. Salamat. Thank you, ma'am. DBM. May DBM tayo dito? Wala. Okay. So, you you have your uh, lunch, ha? Uh, let's let's do this uh, working lunch. Uh, please kumain kayo. Baka mamaya ako pang dahilan at nagutuman kayo. I don't want to be the cause of your uh, your pain and hunger. Uh, so let's proceed to Senate Bill Numbers 431 and 668, both amending RA Number 9263 or the BFP and BGMP Professionalization Act of 2004 as amended. Thank you, sir. Permission to leave. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Attorney. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Senyo. Salamat. Ah, may DBM pala online. Ah, ba ba sa bakit ba sekretaryat bakit natin na uh, nabitahan dito si General Katapang sa may ready ka na presentation o wala tatanungin uh, ka lang, lang kita mamaya sir thank you sir BG uh, Bureau of Fire uh, isang dito pala yung kan BGMP Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Nakasubmit na rin kami, sir, ng position paper on these proposed bills. But just for the record, nandito na rin lang tayo. Uh, I would like to make a statement, uh, Mr. Chair, just for the record lang. So to the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs and author of Senate Bill Number 431, Honorable Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, and also the author of Senate Bill Number 668, Honorable Senator Jingo Estrada, and all other distinguished senators who are virtually present. Also to Attorney Gino Lavarias, the representative of the DILG, Assistant Secretary for External and Legislative Affairs, and other research persons in attendance. Good afternoon. The BGMP wishes to convey its sincerest gratitude 
to the authors of these Senate bills which seek to upgrade the rank structure in the BGMP and BAP, making them at par with other military and uniform services. The entire force of the BGMP would be perpetually grateful if this were passed into law. The BGMP for 31 years since its creation, pursuant to Republic Act 6975, has been faithful to its mandate of safekeeping and development of persons deprived of liberty. It endeavors to enhance and capacitate PDL for the reintegration into society. Every BGMP personnel pours in all their efforts and dedication in support of this endeavor, even to the extent of risking their lives and limbs. The only play of BGMP personnel is to remove the inequality in the rank structure among uniform services by providing equal treatment, recognition, and compensation that justly correspond to the amount of sacrifice, dedication, and commitment its jail personnel is putting in for the maintenance of peace and order and enhancement of public safety. The Jail Bureau, therefore, fully supports Senate Bill numbers 431 and 668 because the passage of these bills will benefit the more than 21,000 BGMP personnel and their families and the new generation of jail officers. Also, Mr. Chair, this would also address the Bureau's slow pacing promotion, which takes eight to 10 years for a jail officer one to get promotion to the next high rank. So, Part of our proposal is the Jail Bureau's personal service requirement, which presents the increase in budget in terms of manpower requirement as support to the operational needs of the BGMP. Understanding the enormous budget increase upon the enactment of the new rank structure in consideration of the priority agenda of the national government, the Jail Bureau opted to prioritize the key positions indicated explicitly in the proposed bill for the modification of the approved number of plantilla items for the uniform personnel of the BGMP. And because of this, Mr. Chair, we are very much willing to sit down with the Department of Budget and Management and in this committee to tackle this issue on the budget increase. So once again, the BGMP sincerely expresses its strong support to the Senate bills aiming at upgrading the rank structure and classification in the BGMP and, of course, the Bureau of Fire Protection. We are very much willing and enthusiastic to provide and supply all the data, information, the facts, and other technical support necessary to bolster and expedite the passage of this bill. That's all, uh, Mr. Chair, for the BGMP. Thank you. Thank you, BGMP. Uh, Bureau of Fire? Anjan Kapa? Bureau of Fire? To the Honorable Ronald Patugolo. Bureau of Fire? Online. Oh, yeah. You have the floor. To the Honorable Ronald Batu de la Rosa, sir, Your Honor, we have already submitted our position paper on Senate Bill 431. Our position is focused on the three main concerns. One is the rank readjustment. To be at par with other government agencies, such as the Bucor, the Philippine Coast Guard, the PDEA, the Food and Drug Administration, headed by Director General, we propose for the rank adjustment of 16 personnel. One with the rank of four star, salary grade of 30, three three star generals with the salary grade of 29, 12 two star officers occupying the position of Director of Directorate of the National Headquarters. This entails additional fund of 37 million, 420 and 40, 463 pesos, Your Honor. Then the, the second main concern is the term of office of the Chief BEP. For someone to Republic Act 6975, Your Honor, the term of office of the Chief BEP is four years. And with consideration and with the consensus of the senior officers, we agreed and we proposed that from two years, we will reduce the term of office of the chief BEP two years only, Your Honor. We believe that the time, two years, is sufficient 
to effect changes. Then our third main concern, Your Honor, is the salary difference. Pursuant to Republic Act 11466, the fourth trans of the standardization law, the director with the rank of salary grade 28 is 148,171. However, under Republic Act 9263, the director of the uniform sector of the DILG with the rank with the salary grade of 28 is only 102,896 pesos on the base pay. If the promotion, considering the promotion of the director with the rank of a two star, a director with a salary grade of 28, once promoted to a four star officer with the rank of with the salary grade of HG30, it is now comparable with Republic Act 11466 with a salary with the salary of 149,785. It is with high hopes that our concerns will be given due consideration through the passage of Senate Bill 431 into law. So the Honorable Ronald Bato de la Rosa, sir, thank you so much and more power to you, sir. <coughs> thank you. Bakit ka ba online? Ano ka? May COVID ka? May sipon ako, sir. Ah, may sipon? May, si may symptoms? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Louie. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, DILG? Sir. Mr. Chair. Please. Uh, the DILG fully supports the legislative measure as this will rectify the inequalities in the rank classification of the BFP and the BJMP. This measure also opens doors for more motivation dedication and efficiency in the delivery of services of both BFP and BJMP. It is time that we adopt a more common rank of nomenclature in BFP and BJMP for purposes of clarity of command and responsibility. This measure will uplift the morale of the BFP and BJMP. The department interposes no objection and finds the Senate bill proper. And we also interpose no objection as the agency tasked to promulgate the rules and regulations necessary to implement this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, DILG. Uh, alam nyo, yung uh, sa ngayon, PNP, AFP, Coast Guard, Bucor, sila yung mga authorized na four stars, di ba? Four stars. Punta ka doon sa ibang bansa. Punta ka sa Turkey. O kaya yung mga bansa na puntahan ko. Uh, Purstar. Nagsuot ng Purstar. Nung tinanong ko yung rango niya, kapitan lang pala. <laughs> Punta ka sa Iran. O Iraq. Yung mga, yung mga army nila doon. Ang star ay umabot dito. Oh. Dami, hindi lang dito. Dito, puno ng star. <laughs> Kaya, bakit natin ipagdamot yung star doon sa ating mga mga uh, head of agency na dapat gawing full star? Diba? Bakit natin ipagdamot yan? So, I think uh, we don't need to you know, stifle the growth of the organization dahil ang gusto natin na dapat ang full star limitado lang dito sa uh, AP at saka sa PNP. Eh, Bukor nga. Ginawa natin yung 4-star, di ba sir? So, 8-star general ka na ngayon, sir. Mayroon kang 4-star as a chief of staff of the armed forces of the Philippines. Ngayon, may 4-star ka na naman sa Bukor. So, dalawa na tayo. So, dalawa tayo, 8-star general. <laughs> yes, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Uh, civil service. Civil service. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Commission uh, fully supports this bill. The proposal to use the rank titles in the Armed Forces of the Philippines for the BFP and BJMP will place the latter at par with their counterparts in the Philippine National Police, which now utilizes military ranks under Republic Act No. 11200. The BFP and the BJMP, just like the PNP, are agencies created pursuant to RA 6975 and form part of the public safety sector of the DILG. Thus, they should be treated alike. We, however, have uh, some suggestions, Mr. Chair. 
Mr. Chair, we noticed that under Section 1 of the proposed bill, <clears throat> the there is a pro provision here that says that uh, in no case shall any officer who has retired or, or is retirable within six months from his compulsory retirement age be appointed as Chief of the Fire Bureau or Chief of the Jail Bureau. Are we take it to mean that this provision is intended not to circumvent the mandatory retirement age in these agencies. However, it allows appointment of a person who is about to retire within six months. Uh, I think that will uh, defeat the purpose, Mr. Chair, because if a person is already 55 or just turned 55, he can still be appointed as chief, but with a term of four years, he will remain there until he reaches the age of 59. So that will somehow circumvent the retirement age under these agencies. We propose that this be looked into uh, carefully or if possible, if the intention is really not to circumvent the retirement age, then the, the possible age of the appointee for this position should, should not be more than 52 years old. Uh, Mr. Chair. In, in effect, it, it will really, not, not only circumventing, but uh, uh, impliedly uh, uh, going against. Repeal. Yes. Repeal that yes. uh, law. Ganun talaga kung i-approve natin ito. Uh, just like what is happening right now in the armed forces of the Philippines, uh, meros lang fixed term. So, supposed to be mag-retire na yung isang opisyal at the age of 56, but na-appoint siya to a position that is uh, given a fixed term of uh, three years, so hindi na siya mag-retire uh, ng 56, 50, 59 na siya mag-retire. So that, 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 in effect, it really amend that law. So ganun talaga mangyayari. Ang, uh, but anyway, we will study that. Yes, sir. We will study. If, if that's the intention of, the, of this law, then it should be clearly stated here, Mr. Chair. Uh, the next comment is, uh, it is observed that the educational requirement for Deputy Chief Administration, Deputy Chief Operations, and Chief Directorial Staff of the BFP must be a member of the bar. In most positions identified, the proposed educational requirement is at least second year Bachelor of Laws or a graduate of Bachelor of Laws. However, the nature of the work, uh, Mr. Chair, of the BJMP and BFP involves public safety and security. Maybe being a member of the bar will not be an absolute necessity. It may be ideal. It may even be preferred. But to consider it as a mandatory requirement uh, does not serve any useful purpose considering the nature of the functions. I uh, agree. One can perform the I agree with without you. Without being a lawyer. Uh, I agree. Chair. I totally agree with you. Bakit nga ba kayo nag-propose ng ganito? Bakit nyo ginawang lawyer yung Ristar? Bureau of Fire? Are you there? Oh, Louis? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, the, 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 the requirement is a member of the bar or a graduate of masteral degree. Yun lang yung nakalagay, sir. Na-omit lang siguro yung Yes, sir. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Mabuti ni raise ng civil service. Otherwise, magiging kwan itong batas natin na ito kung hindi ito nakita. Pangit. Ah, hindi, hindi rin makalusot sa floor yan. Mayroon pagdedebatehan rin yan doon sa floor. Chair. Sigurado yan, hindi makalusot. Yeah, Please yeah, continue, sir. Continue. That, Mr. Chair, member of the bar or master's degree. However, if you do not have a master's degree, you, do, you have to be a lawyer to be appoint, appointed to that position, which we believe is still not necessary. Because uh, even if you are just a graduate of law, then that would already be an advantage because you have a legal knowledge. Considering the nature of the function, you do not have to be a lawyer to be appointed there, Mr. Chair. Okay, we will uh, take into consideration you, your uh, comment. Sila kasi pinapakuan nila na. Kasi when papunta na sa taas, alam nyo, from the point of view of the Bureau of Fire, sa KBJMP, papunta sa taas, the competition is very stiff. So in order to eliminate competition, may basis ka to eliminate uh, others, kaya tinaasan nila requirement. Ginawa nilang member of the bar or master's uh, degree holder. Which uh, also sa PNP, sa atin ba sa PNP ba, master's is requirement bago ka ma-promote ng senior soap. Kaya ito sa 
PNP, hindi ka kailangang maging chief PNP para maging graduate ng masteral. Requirement yan, bago ka, before you will be promoted to uh, full kernel. So, uh, yan ang requirement. Masteral degree holder ka. So, anyway, i-consider natin yan. Ha? Thank you, thank you. Any more comment from uh, civil service? Other than that, we support the bill, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, very valuable input, uh, civil service. Uh, Bureau of uh, DOJ, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the department is uh, formalizing its uh, position paper on, on the uh, bills. Uh, but initially, the department uh, interposes no objection. We see no clear and categorical infringement of the Constitution on the proposed measures. Uh, the proposed bills simply seek to simplify the rank classification of uniformed personnel of both BJMP and B BFP and pattern the same uh, with their counterparts of uh, other uniform personnel. However, as regards the pass possible issues in the salary grade and other plantilla position in the proposed measures, we defer to the wisdom of the uh, relevant government agencies such as uh, the DBM, Mr. Chair. But we will be submitting our formal position paper on the matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, DOJ. Uh, Department of Finance? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, for this bill, we also submit our position, official position paper on this. But initially, sir, we would like to manifest that we pose no objection on the overall goal of the bill. Um, however, just like uh, what our uh, colleague from DOJ, we respectfully defer for the DBM on the budgetary implications of this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you. DBM? Andiyan ka pa, DBM? Good afternoon, yes, Mr. Chair. Chair. Uh, go ahead. Uh, you have the floor. Yes, sir. Uh, as regards our general comments, since we haven't submitted our official DBM position paper yet, uh, on the change in nomenclature, that is renaming of the uh, positions uh, listed in the proposed suggested measures, we interpose no objection to the proposed change in the nomenclature of the ranks of the uniform personnel. Uh, that uh, that will be from fire officer one all the way up to the director positions. It bears stressing that the changes in the nomenclature will not have any budgetary implications as the rank classification base pay schedule will remain unchanged. Uh, as regards the, the second uh, query or on the creation of two additional ranks and uh, the possible budgetary implications, the same is still undergoing a review and evaluation by our uh, uh, Bureau concern. And we will definitely submit sir, our uh, position on that matter. And we are also, uh, we will we welcome also the consultation meetings with the BJMP, with the BFP, and, and the committee on the possibility of, of discussing the budgetary implications of this uh, proposed legislative measures. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, uh, DBM. Uh, isang poster general lang yan. Kukunti lang gagastos sa inyo dyan. Isang tao lang yan eh. Tapos ilang tristar? Tatlo. Tatlo, oh, additional sir. tatlo. Tatlong tao lang si 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 natin and uh, I, uh, they, they are very 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 uh, worthy of that uh, salary that you are that you will be giving. Uh, alam natin 'yan. Palaging uh, kuha niyan. Palaging uh, nag uh, tinataya lang buhay nila sa trabaho nila. Thank you, uh, DBM. Uh, General Katapang, sir, you want to say something? Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, welcome, welcome to Biocor, sir. Welcome, welcome to Biocor. <laughs> uh, we are in support of the request or this bill to give them the proper ranks they want. Ang problema lang, Your Honor, baka nakalimutan yung Biocor. So we will, will be, we will be the only unit na superintendents. Police rank pa rin na sinundo namin. Oh. <laughs> Say, sir, we, we will consider that. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. Magpahil lang siro kami na si Parit Bill for that. Uh, but anyway, at least yung... Uh, 
kayo meron na kayong four star. Sila wala pa. Yung BJMP at saka fire. Uh, yung one na lang, yung rank, uh, yung, ang tawag niyan? Terminology, ha? Rank uh, classification. Oh, from, uh, from the former, uh, yung superintendent, uh, chief superintendent, eh, dapat uh, para uniform. Para uniform na. Uh, wala na confusion. Uh, eh, military rank na lang natin. Balik doon. Uh, ito ay eh, nag-uugat ito lahat kay President Duterte noon eh. Sabi niya, ay, katagal ko ng mayor ng Dabao. Ito mga tao na ito, kaharap ko na araw-araw. Ilang taon na ako nag-mayor. Ngayon, presidente na ako. Hindi ko pa rin mamimurize yung ranggo ninyo. Sinyong si Prentendent, sinyong inspector, sinyong... Uh, Yeah, kaya mas maganda talaga ay balik sa military rank para uniform na lahat. Hindi wala na confusion. So, yun. Nauna lang PNP, di ba? Kayo Coast Guard, kuha na kayo, no? Military rank na kayo, no? We have the uh, naval uh, rank, sir. Ah, naval, naval yes, rank. Sir. Military rank pa rin. Yes, sir. Naval yes, rank. Sir. Uh, Admiral, Commodore, ganun, di ba? Yes, sir. Okay. Commander, kayo ang wala pa. Fire at saka... Uh, BJMP. So, I think uh, meron pang gusto magsalita? Ma'am? Uh, yes, go ahead. Sir, we just like uh, to manifest our uh, uh, support to the amendments of, uh, for this bill. And uh, we only have one suggestion, sir. Uh, yung ratio po, sir, ng officer and uh, non-officer. This is to ensure the pyramid pyramidal structure, sir, na that is being uh, observed by the military and the other uniform service uh, services, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hindi yan maging kwan. Ang pyramid niyan, pyramid pa rin. Kasi kukunti lang yung one, uh, di ba, mga general. Anyway, eh, kinukusider natin yan. Huwag kang mag-alala. So from here, meron pa? Okay na tayo? So, sir, good luck sa Bucor, ha? Good luck sa, good luck sa iyo dyan. Tama yung sabi mo, walang congratulations kasi wala pa accomplishment. Good luck muna. Thank you, so, thank you, Senator. Uh, yung gawin lang dyan, sir, is you walk slowly at night but carry a big stick. Uh, yan. <laughs> yan ang gagawin mo dyan. Carry, walk slowly at night, but carry a big stick. Uh, again, uh, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat for your all your very valuable inputs into this uh, measure and uh, it will not be wasted. Everything will be considered and uh, I would like to thank everyone for uh, your contribution for uh, the development of this measure. Again, uh, good day and uh, thank you. Uh, hearing is uh, adjourned. Thank you.